DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents The Cavalcade of America, starring Kay Francis. Tonight, The Cavalcade of America comes to you from Hollywood to enable us to present our enchanting star of the evening, Miss Kay Francis. Miss Francis, at work on her new picture, Always in My Heart, for Warner Brothers, was unable to be with us in New York, so here we are. Our play is based on Shirley Seifert's best-selling novel, Water to the Wilderness, a romantic love story of a daring colonel of the Continental Army and the beautiful sister of the Spanish governor of the old trading post of St. Louis. Now the lights are being dimmed as the curtain goes up on Waters of the Wilderness. Tonight's play in the DuPont Cavalcade of America. a giant. Americans, patriots, they call themselves. They are more ferocious than the Indians. Their leader, Colonel Clark, is a veritable monster of a man who paints his face in battle like a savage. They say he can destroy a wood stockade with his bare hands. He's a madman, a barbarian. Rumors, legends of a strange American and his band of frontier fighters ranging the upper Mississippi Valley in the summer of 1778 the third year of the War of Independence. And in the little Spanish trading post of St. Louis on the Mississippi, rumors, legends, and curiosity. For the strange American is due to visit here this very day. And now His Excellency, the Governor, Don Fernando de Leyva, with his wife, the Lady Maria, his pretty young sister, Teresa, and their guests, wait impatiently for the visitor to arrive. But if only half the things they say of this Colonel Clark are true, a monster... A barbarian. I should not be concerned, my dear sister. He will not scalp you. Concerned? He sounds like the only interesting man in the Western Hemisphere. If you would prefer me in buckskin, senorita. Oh, pleasant company always accepted, of course, Mr. Leon. What did you say his name was, my dear? Clark. George Rogers Clark. A colonel of the colonial forces, I believe. Has he no title? Titles are not permitted by his government, my dear. Not permitted? Then how in heaven's name can there be a government? To tell you the truth, Don Fernando... I have wondered why you have invited this young rebel here this afternoon. After all, he is a leader of sorts in an insurrection against the British crown. There is a very good reason. I have the best of information from Madrid that Spain will very soon conclude a military alliance with the Americans. An alliance? With this rebel? Rebel or no, from our point of view, the idea has its merit. After all, what have we... Suzette! Suzette! Here, over by the window. What is it, Teresa? Do you see him coming up the path? Oh, but he is a giant. Certainly a handsome man, at least. Uh, Suzette, how do I look? Is my hair in place? You look beautiful, as usual, Teresa. Not more beautiful than usual? Colonel George Rogers Clark to see His Excellency the Governor. Colonel Clark. Good evening, Your Excellency. This is a great pleasure, sir. Colonel Clark, permit me to present my wife, my sister Teresa, her friend, Mademoiselle Suzette, and Mr. Liard, our most prosperous fur trader of these parts. Oh, oh sure they is. Liard. I'm happy to meet you. This is more of a surprise than we'd hoped, Colonel. Here we had expected a man dressed in uh, animal skins. And you appear in this handsome blue uniform. Well, I'm glad you like it. And matter of fact, Colonel Clark, I am not sure the color becomes you. I understand some folks prefer red, British red. Oh, I am sure you could have had the red coat of a British officer if you'd wanted one, Colonel. They're not hard to get. There are lots of ways... Treachery is one. <laughs> uh, there seems to be a storm coming up. I hope it will be over before you leave, Colonel Clark. No great matter, Your Excellency. I feel right at home in a storm. Oh, <laughs> yes. But, Colonel Clark... It is a rebellion against your government and your king, is it not? That's one way of looking at it, ma'am. Why did such a thing have to happen? Well, that's kind of a long story. Oh, do tell us, Colonel. I'm sure we would all like to know. Very well. With your permission, Your Excellency. Oh, by all means, my boy, by all means. When the war began, Mr. Razor, our leaders in Philadelphia drew up a document. 
I think it expresses better than anything else I could tell you what we're fighting for. It's called a Declaration of Independence. It says that all men are created equal, are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to abolish or to destroy it. I guess I've been talking a lot, but does that help you to understand, Mr. Rayford? Yes. Yes. It has helped me to understand many things. Is that all your explanation, Colonel Clark? Not quite, Mr. Leon. There are no British within 500 miles of St. Louis. And yet the Indians here are getting guns. That's why I'm here. I'm going to find out where they get those guns. And I don't aim to fail. I pray God you will succeed, Colonel Clark. There is a kind of nobility about this man and his beliefs that I have never seen in any nobleman. He has called several times at my brother's house. He has spoken but a few words to me, and yet those words he spoke. If I but knew what was in his heart, I might know better what is in my own. There is to be a ball tonight. He has promised to come if he can. Perhaps it will be tonight. I'd like you to meet Tom Pace, one of my captains. Are you one of those wild soldiers from Kentucky, Captain Pace? Oh, now, you can't believe more than about half what you hear about us, ma'am. You know what they told me last winter? They said that when you marched on Cahokia, you were in such haste that you waded across the Mississippi. My, that's a terrible lie to tell a lady. You know what really happened that day, ma'am? No. Well, we was in a hurry, all right, but we didn't wade across the Mississippi. We jumped. <laughs> Teresa, I'm so glad I found you. They want you to do a dance. Oh, Suzette, not tonight, not with all these people. But Teresa, you must. Maria has promised you would. Uh, quiet. Quiet, everybody. Teresa is going to dance. Well, what sort of a dance is it, Miss Teresa? It is a dance that the women do in Spain, where my home is. As they do it, it is said to be very beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Teresa de Labor in a dance of her native Spain. <laughs> Colonel Clark, did you like my dance? We don't have beauty like that in this rough country of ours, Miss Teresa. In this rough country of yours, you have another kind of beauty. The dream of your country is a thing of beauty, Colonel Clark. Has anyone ever told you that before? Never just that way. Ah, uh, senorita, I've been admiring you from afar all evening. And now I've come to claim a dance with you. Forgive me, Mr. Leard, but Colonel Clark has already spoken for this dance. Indeed. I didn't realize that dancing was another of the colonel's accomplishments. Yep. Learned it from the Indian. Well, perhaps a little later. Until then, senorita. Until then, Mr. Leard. Why did you do that, Mr. Rayford? Because I don't like him. I don't trust him. Oh. I was sort of hoping it was because you'd rather be with me. Women sometimes know what is in the mind of a man, Colonel Clark. But a man should never presume to know what is in the mind of a woman. Miss Teresa... I want to talk to you. Why, you're doing splendidly, Colonel. I mean, alone. Now, look, out on the terrace. Uh, will you go with me? Well, it's not quite proper. What I have to say won't take long. For a moment, then. What is it you wish to talk to me about? About you? About how lovely you are? How much I've thought about you? Well, perhaps you should talk to my brother, who is my guardian. In Spain, when a young man speaks in such a way to a girl... But not in America, Teresa. How, then, in America? 
Like... Like this. Teresa. Teresa, my dear. Oh, my darling. Oh, it's wrong, Teresa. It's all wrong. But you have kissed me. Yeah, but to have let you know. Why? Because it's true what they say about me. I am a barbarian. I'm a savage. Fighting for my life with other savages. Living in the woods like an animal. Do you think I can take you with me? You could leave your woods. But how? Who else will protect these people and their little homes and families? Give them time to grow and be a nation. Is there no one else who can protect them in all this great America? Perhaps. And suppose he were here where I am. Suppose he fell in love. As I have. I fear he would go back to his woods. But, Teresa, I'm coming back to you. I'm coming... Listen. What is it? Drums. Indian war drums. Beginning. Hey, Colonel. Colonel Clark. Yes, Tom, over here. I suppose you heard the drums. A couple of boys just came in. Said there's a little trouble up the river. You have horses? Well, you can hardly call them horses, but they'll get us there. You better get moving. Teresa, when will I see you? When you have finished what you have to do. Colonel, Colonel, what is it? Is it serious, my boy? There's no danger here. It's way up the river. Come on, Tom. Expect to find your man who gives guns to Indians tonight, Colonel? Maybe not tonight, Mr. Liard, but someday, and someday soon. Good night. Waters of the Wilderness, starring Kay Francis, and brought to you on the Cavalcade of America by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. And now, back to our play. They attacked just after dark. We'd have been all right if they hadn't had guns. Me and about 15 others was all that was left, and the whole settlement burned to the ground. They'd have got us all if Clark and his men hadn't got there when they did. I got the children out, and we hid in the woods for three days. When we went back, there was nothing but ashes. Them that was killed was the lucky ones, I guess. I don't know what we're going to do now. Go back east, I reckon. White men can't never live out here now that the Indians got guns. This here Colonel Clark got here with his soldiers about sunup, and so we was able to fight them off. But they'll be back soon as he goes. With all them gins they're getting from someplace, I don't know what we're going to do. Aren't you tired yet, Teresa? I feel as though we've been riding all day. Now, Suzette, just a little further. But there's nothing ahead but woods, and they're getting thicker all the time. Why, Suzette? Who knows? Perhaps we'll meet a band of knights to find an enchanted castle. Oh, Teresa. Teresa, what do you hear from Colonel Clark? Oh, uh, a letter once in a while. What does he say? He's disheartened. His men are hungry and exhausted. Is that all? No. Oh, Suzette, I... I don't know what to think. I don't know what to hope, except to hope that I can help him. That sounds very noble, Teresa, but I think he'd rather have you marry him. Hmm. Suzette, look, ahead there in the clearing. A house, a new one. That must be the one. What one? The one that the Liard is building. Teresa, you knew it was here all the time. Why didn't you tell me? I only knew what you knew, that Mr. Liard was building a new house somewhere near St. Louis. Let's pay him a visit. I thought you didn't like him. And anyway, he isn't here. You know he's down in New Orleans. That's why I think this would be a good time to call on him. Here, oh, hold my horse. Teresa, you wouldn't go into a man's house. Now, I just want to look at the house. They say he has lovely furniture sent all the way from New Orleans. Come on. Down you come. Oh, all right. You'd better knock. There's probably someone here. It looks more like a fortress than a house. Maybe it's supposed to. What you want? Oh, um, is Mr. Liard at home? He's not home. Well, we are friends of his. Could we come in for a minute and look at the new house? You friends? 
Good friends? Yes, yes, very good friends. Can come. Let's not stay long. I just want to look around. Hey, uh, I don't see much furniture, but I know he had boxes and boxes of it sent up from New Orleans. I wonder what's in here. It must be the parlor. Is it all right if we look? Can look. Come on, Suzette. What a huge room. It is like a fortress. Suzette, look at those boxes. Why, that must be the furniture. He hasn't unpacked it. Furniture? In boxes like that? Here, help me lift this cover. Teresa, I don't think Help we me. Are... Teresa. Gun. Oh. New gun. Oh. And look here. Guns in this one, too. And in the next oh, one. Oh, Teresa. Why, there must be enough for an army. And look. Look here. Here's lead for making bullets. And kegs of powder. What do you suppose, Mr. Leon? Suzette, promise me you won't ever mention this to a soul. Promise. All right, but Listen, what? Suzette. I've suspected Mr. Liard for a long time. I may still be wrong, but somehow, before anyone knows, I've got to find out for sure. tell you, they're gathering from all around. I've seen hundreds of campfires out there in the plains. It's St. Louis they're after this time. The Sioux tribes are worse than the Iroquois here. I wouldn't want to be in St. Louis. Yep. No soldiers, no guns, no fort. Clark could save them if he ever gets there. Is there any news? No, Teresa. We have manned what fortifications we have. We can only wait and pray. You have no further word of Colonel Clark? Nothing. I, I can't understand it. He should have been here hours ago. What makes you so sure he will come, Teresa? Because he said that he would. When do you think they will attack Fernando? Drums are louder. Perhaps tonight. Perhaps not for days. Excellency, senorita. Mr. Liari, have you been able to find out anything? Unfortunately, yes, your excellency. The enemy is even stronger than we'd feared. How many? At least a thousand. I beg of you again, Your Excellency, to accept my advice. If we surrender now, we can make fair terms with our white leaders. If we wait for the attack, we shall be massacred to the last man. I am not in the habit of surrendering without a fight, Mr. Liard. Under ordinary circumstances, no. But these are savages who give and expect no mercy. You have no regular soldiers, and worst of all, your militia have no guns. Yes, I know, I know. I say this only in the name of humanity. For the sake of the women and children. He is right, you know, Teresa. Fernando, I know Colonel Clark will come. If we had enough guns, perhaps we could afford to wait, but... Mr. Liard, go with the delegation to the white leaders. Ask what terms... Fernando, wait. There's not much time, Your Excellency. If we had guns, could we make a fight? We could make a stand, at least, perhaps until help came, but without them... We are not without them. We have guns. What? Mr. Liard has guns stored in his house. All we need. Really, Senorita, there's no time for joking. I am not joking. I have seen the guns with my own eyes. I had hoped that you were keeping them for such a time as this. But if you were Your not... Your Excellency, the lady's mind has clearly become unbalanced from anxiety. Fernando, I demand that you search his house. But, my dear child, Mr. Leon... Fernando, I am your sister. If only as a courtesy to my rank, you must do as I ask. If you wish, then, Therese, I am sure Mr. Liard can have no objection. Just a minute, Your Excellency. Liard? Grab your hands, Your Excellency. Don't move, Senorita. I should not like to have to shoot either of you. How does it feel to be a traitor, Mr. Liard? I must remind you, Senorita, that you're in somewhat unfortunate position of supporting a rebellion against the crown. If you'll both move over toward the door. Ah. We seem to be having a visitor. Don't move, either of you. Your Excellency. George. Won't you join us, Colonel Clark? Now put your hands. Your Excellency, what's happened here? Liard is the man who has been smuggling guns. Teresa found him out. A fact which will cause her some regret, if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to trouble you with that pistol in your belt, Colonel Clark. Now, if you'll all be kind enough to stand against the wall. Stand we are, Mr. Leon. I'd hate to shoot a man in the back. Put him up. Tom. Better take his gun, Colonel. Oh, thanks, Tom. Don't mention it, Colonel. Don't mention it. You better come along with me, Mr. Leon. Listen. They'll be attacking soon now. How will your men stand up under fire, Excellency? Well enough, Colonel Clark. Now that they can return it. You better man the east ramparts, and I'll take the center and the west. They'll come in a rush. Have your men hold fire until then. Then give them a volley and reload fast. Listen. It's like thunder. George. I'll be all right. I'm right at home in a storm. Remember?
How are the wounded, Tom? Any of them bad? A couple pretty bad, but the rest can get around all right. And the other? Kind of tuckered out. They'll be ready to march for Detroit in the morning, though. Tom, could you leave them there alone? You know those men wouldn't be the same without you, Colonel. Why not? They could march as far, shoot as straight. You ain't aiming to stay behind, are you? I don't know, Tom. I don't know. I hear they're pretty bad off in Detroit. That's a mighty important place for the colonies to hold. Don't you think I know that? I reckon you do. I'll be waiting for you down at the encampment. I'll send you word. Good night, Tom. Good night, Colonel. Even, Miss Teresa. Good evening, Tom. Teresa. I saw the light. It's late. You'll be marching for Detroit in the morning. Teresa, listen to me. There's a decision to make. Shall we face it now? No. Either I serve this half-formed country of mine, this half-held belief about a free republic, and throw my life away, or I keep it. And live as a man should live. Either I go or I stay. With you. Well? I can't. I won't give up my whole life. The frontier fighting these border massacres will go on for years. There'll never be any rest for me. I know that. I'm only a man like other men. I want only the things that other men want. Love and a home. I want you, Teresa. I love you more than anything else in the world. Those are very beautiful words when you say them. There have never been any other words in my mind since I first met you. There were one. I've always remembered them. Wonderful words. You said, All men are created equal. They are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You haven't forgotten, have you? No. You had, I... I couldn't love you as I do. I couldn't remember you as I will all the rest of my life. And now for this thing we both believe in. You must make the sacrifice that only you can make. And so must I. Goodbye, George. Teresa. No, no. Go now. And you? I? I will return to Spain. No, no. Don't ask me to be near you and, and not to be near you. Go quickly. Go. Go. Goodbye. Teresa. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Goodbye, my love. May God be with you and your America. Francis for a grand performance on our Cavalcade of America tonight. In just a moment, Miss Francis will come back to the microphone to let you in on some special news. But first, Gane Whitman has a word about something very important to all of us these days. With a large portion of our national business life diverted to production for defense, with great changes made in our normal mechanism of production and consumption, chemistry is successfully filling in many gaps. Under the chromium plate of your bathroom and kitchen faucets, for example... There are coatings of copper and nickel, but we need all of our nickel for defense. So DuPont has developed a new plating process that lays on a heavier coating of copper under the chromium and reduces the amount of nickel required by as much as 80%. This new DuPont process speeds up production, gives better protection to the base metal, and since 15 to 20 million pounds of nickel a year are used in plating, conserves more than 7 million pounds a year of this important defense metal. Take a common household machine like a refrigerator. Millions of us have learned what a convenience modern refrigerators are. If manufacturers stopped making them, we'd find it difficult to get along without them. But a good deal of metal goes into a refrigerator, and metal is much in demand for defense. Can plastics take the place of metal in refrigerators? Not entirely, but they can go a long way. 1942 refrigerator models, according to engineers, will have more than 50 plastic parts. A plastic like DuPont's Lucite methyl methacrylate resin is especially good for refrigerators. 
not merely because of its beauty, but because of its economy, its rugged durability, and the especially important fact that it doesn't rust, can't rust. Aluminum is another precious metal these days. And of course, aluminum paint is made with aluminum. So DuPont paint chemists have tackled the aluminum paint problem. Now they're making a gray paint that approximates it in color. And where aluminum paint is used to prevent loss by evaporation on oil storage tanks, for instance, DuPont paint experts have found that Dulux Gloss White does the job as well or better. And to name a few others, neoprene that's better than rubber for many purposes, synthetic camphor that's equivalent to natural camphor, cellulose sponges that are superior to many other cleaning aids. These products of the chemical laboratory really can't be called substitutes or in many cases, they actually serve us better than their opposite numbers produced by nature. All of us are ready and willing to accept the sacrifices the defense program demands. But our morale may be the better for our knowing that chemistry is making every effort to do its share to help. Such an effort is part and parcel of the DuPont pledge, better things for better living through chemistry. And now, the star of tonight's DuPont Cavalcade of America, Miss Kay Francis. Thank you. Thank you, friends here in the studio and listeners everywhere. I consider it a genuine compliment to have been invited to appear on such an outstanding program as your Cavalcade of America. We here in Hollywood have always admired your program, as well as the wonderful things the DuPont Company is doing. Thank you very much, Miss Francis. But what about the special news you were going to tell us? Oh, yes. Next Monday evening at the same time, Cavalcade of America will present an adaptation of RKO's great new picture... All That Money Can Buy. My good friends, Edward Arnold and Walter Houston, will play the same leading roles they do in the picture, supported by James Craig, Anne Shirley, and Jane Darwell, also featured in the film. I do hope you all will listen, for I've seen the first rehearsals, and I can assure you that it's a grand show. Thank you. Tonight's play, Waters of the Wilderness, was written especially for the Cavalcade of America by Robert L. Richards, from the novel of the same name by Shirley Seifert, published by J.B. Levincott Company. Kay Francis appeared through special arrangement with Warner Brothers. The orchestra and the original musical score were composed and directed by Robert Armbruster. Supporting players tonight included Gail Gordon as Colonel Clark, Lou Merrill as Fernando, Gerald Moore as Liard, Agnes Moorhead as Suzette, B. Benaderet as Maria, Jack Mather as Tom Pate. Don't forget, next week, Edward Arnold, Walter Houston, James Craig, Anne Shirley, and Jane Darwell in RKO's new picture, All That Money Can Buy, adapted from Stephen Vincent Benet's prize-winning story, The Devil and Daniel Webster. On the Cavalcade of America, your announcer is John Heaston, sending best wishes from DuPont. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company.